Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Getting ready to leave the house, go grab some food, and then I'm gonna get back and we're gonna talk about what should I do with these two guys? Is it time to let the GT3 and the Ferrari go? Obviously, you know, we're in the midst of a financial crisis a health crisis and I've gotten some comments on prior videos specifically my last couple of videos about these two cars and is it time for me to just cut bait or should I hang on to them well guys I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later on in the vlog so stay tuned don't go nowhere but for right now I gotta get out of here and go grab some food and uh, move on with the rest of my day. And I'm gonna take you guys with me. Let's go. We got the 63 today, guys. Making a little pit stop to Target. Gotta get a few essentials. So we wanna make sure we do that. And then we go home continue on with our day it's been hard to find basic stuff at my local grocery store so we're gonna try to poke in here and target and see if they got any of that basic stuff we need i'll tell you what man it's amazing that these grocery stores are having a shortage of basic food items but you know what can you do when people come in and it's a mad rush to buy everything what can you do we got some uh brown rice what else we got helmet a uh, helmet bike helmet some jelly and some uh bushes beans all right guys we're leaving target we got the essentials got what we needed so walking up here to grab this food you can see parking lot is pretty well deserted not a lot of activity i believe in the state of florida the governor has uh asked the restaurants to not allow people to uh be able to sit inside the restaurant and eat but you can still come and get takeout well we're headed to M mellow mushroom which is right here a spot that i come to quite often here's what i'm talking about guys carry out pick up only no restaurants in the state of florida and you can sit down and dine in got this pizza got some wings as well all right guys we got a z4 in front of me i thought he wanted to do something but i'm gonna go ahead and uh get past him I don't think he want to run. I don't think he want to mess with this 63. But uh, nice little, nice little car though. I like it. Very nice, very nice. Very nice, very nice. Man, this pizza looks real good, guys. This mellow mushroom. I'll tell you what, if you got one where you live, go check it out. Best pizza I've ever had. Now, I typically don't do pepperoni. Typically, my daughter does the pepperoni, so, but I'm making an exception today, cause, and then here are my uh, baked wings, not fried, not breaded, but baked. I've owned my dream car, Ferrari 458, for about three years now. I've owned this GT3 for about a year. Now, this is a 2019, this is a 2015. But under the circumstances, we're facing now with this pandemic and with this financial crisis. You know, the question is, is it time to cut them loose? Guys, the way I pay for these cars is through additional streams of income. I've been creating and building these additional streams of income for over 20 years. And when I initially started making this money my whole goal was to put myself in a position where i could afford some of the things that i wanted 
from a lifestyle standpoint. 458 and the GT3 and all the other cars that I've owned was my motivation behind that. I was a banker for 25 years and made a, gr a great living as a banker, was able to take care of my family, save for retirement, do all the things that you would normally do with your nine to five income or income that you make through a business you created. But for these cars right here, my nine to five corporate job wasn't designed to pay for this stuff. I had to go out and make sure I had to create some additional streams of income that would allow me to buy these cars and not feel guilty that I was using money from my nine to five job that was earmarked for other things. So as I created this income and started investing this money, a purpose was to one, create enough so that I could buy these cars and then two, generate ongoing income so that I could you know, pay for the cars and make sure the maintenance was taken care of, the insurance was taken care of, and et cetera. Now that we are faced with a potential financial crisis, recession, depression, whatever you want to call it, the question is, should I sell these or should I keep them? Now, I know for a lot of you guys, and the reason I, I let, let me let me take that back. Not a lot of you guys. There are a few of you guys who have dropped comments on several of my most recent videos around these cars and I'm going to lose the cars and, you know, all this other stuff. Here's what I can tell you. And again, you guys know I normally don't even deal with negative comments. But again, you know, in this community, everybody has a voice. As long as you're not, you know, targeting somebody and being mean to them and saying things you shouldn't be saying, I I'm cool with you saying whatever you want to say. Because I'm a positive guy. Normally what I do is through the comments. I roll through the comments and I respond to people who respond positively or have something constructive to say. Anybody that's in there being a knucklehead, I normally don't even respond. To. I just roll on past because I know who I am and, and I understand what my... Uh, criteria is when I was setting out to put myself in a position to purchase these cars. But when I got that comment about, you know, with the meltdown happening or possible financial meltdown happening, you know, should you get rid of these or should you keep them? Is it prudent to keep depreciating assets when the investments that you utilize to generate income to pay for them may be in jeopardy? So that's a, that's a solid question. I think that's a reasonable question. And that's why I'm answering that question in this, in this vlog. And, and my answer to that is, in my situation, I'm fine. Although I have assets in the form of equities in the stock market that have taken a decline in value, I have other assets. I have real estate assets. I also have cash. But the biggest thing that I have is my ability to be able to create income. So that's why a lot of times when people are panicking as it relates to the stock market, although I'm heavily invested in equities, I don't panic because I understand I know how to go out and create income. I've been doing it for 20 years, guys, above and beyond the income I was making from my nine to five job when I was a, a commercial banker. So I don't I don't really panic when when the markets go down and, and, and I'm heavily invested. I don't really panic because I understand, hey, if the markets are down and our economy is down, then, you know, I feel for all the people out there who, who are going through hard times. But I know as an investor, that's an opportunity for me then to go out and find assets like real estate that I'll start buying. And then I know once this thing starts its uh, uh, ascension again to, to new heights when the stock market starts going back up and real estate will start going back up. At that point, I'll get rid of those assets and be able to create 
a profit from doing that. So I understand that although the financial markets are crashing, there are other asset classes out there like real estate that'll probably fall suit somewhat and I'll be able to pick up those assets and then in three, four, five, six years from now, I'll be able to sell those assets like I've done before and build my net worth again and create more cash. And another way I make cash is through luxury watch sales. Now, a lot of you would think, well, wow, if the economy is tanking, nobody's buying anything, how do you make money off watches? Well, I can tell you this, guys. There's a segment of our population that will always buy luxury watches. There's a segment of our population that will always buy luxury cars, no matter what the economy is doing. There's a level of wealth out there and a level of uh, sophisticated uh, money makers out there who will always make money. So trust me, in times like this, when people will be selling their luxury items, a guy like me who has cash on the sideline will start picking those luxury items up like luxury watches and sit tight, hold them in inventory and then start reselling them to this segment of population out there who are recession proof for the lack of a better term. So there are always ways that I'm thinking about making money. When it is time to sell, I will sell. Like I mentioned, I've owned the Ferrari for three years. I've owned the GT3 for a year. Now in 90 days, 120 days, if the market is just still tanking and things are just terrible, would I be in a position where I could sell this thing, create some more additional cash so that I can go out and buy some assets like real estate? Absolutely. Would I do that? Absolutely. That's the only way I would sell this thing is to be able to create cash so that I could buy assets like real estate at a really, really deep reduced price and then hold those real estate assets until the market returns. And then I'll sell them like I did in 28, when I, like I did in 2008, when I bought a bunch of real estate in 2008, 2009, and I held it until around 2014, and then I liquidated it and made a bunch of cash. So I'll do the same thing in this cycle if it gets to that point. But guys, trust me, I am not gonna keep cars just to keep them and put myself in jeopardy financially or my family. I wouldn't do that. I thought I'd just clarify that because I, like I said, I've been getting a couple questions and I thought it was valid questions. You know, what do you do with luxury depreciating assets like this when you're in a down economy? And that's what I would do. I'd keep them for now, assess the situation, if I can extract, if I can sell them and get cash to invest in something else that's going to make me a huge return, then that's what I will do. Well, all right, guys, drop me some comments. Tell me what you think. What would you do with cars like this at this moment? And guys, feel free to say whatever you want to say. I'm a big boy. I know how to handle constructive feedback. I know how to handle criticism. I also appreciate any uh, comments that you guys make. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, and give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel and it helps me too. But always remember guys, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys always, no matter what, keep chasing your greatness. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Actually, I'll catch you guys on the next vlog. Peace.